Hi, I'm Jerry Boykin. Last week, uh, we humiliated ourselves as a nation the way we pulled out of uh, Yemen and evacuated our embassy. They remember that embassy as sovereign U.S. soil. Our Marines were forced to give up their weapons and to leave with what many might describe as their tail tucked between their legs. Not to any fault of their own, but because of political considerations and decisions by this administration. Right now we have 350 to 400 Marines at an air base in Iraq called Al-Assad Air Base. And about five miles from them are uh, an untold number of uh, ISIS fighters who have just taken a small city called al-Baghdadi. So the question is, what do we do now? Do we rescue those Marines that are there at al-Assad? Do we tell them to evacuate? Or do we reinforce them? I opt for reinforce. Now is a great time to draw ISIS into a good battle. We need to strike a lethal blow against ISIS. We need to let those Marines have all they want, all they can use there in terms of uh, materiel. We need to send more troops in. We need to send in artillery. We need uh, airplanes. We need all kinds of ammunition and other types of things that they would need to strike a lethal blow against ISIS. Now's the time. Let's have the fight right there. Remember when Leonidas was uh, approached by a runner from King Xerxes at the Battle of Thermopylae. Xerxes sent a message saying, lay down your weapons and I'll let you go. And Leonidas sent a message back that we're all familiar with, Molan Labe, come and take them. That's the way our Marines feel right now. I assure you, the ethos of the Marine Corps, the tradition of the Marine Corps says stand and fight. And those Marines are anxious now to fight. And I think we ought to do everything we can to give them what they need to make a real battle out of this and strike a blow against ISIS that will decimate them, that will kill many of them, maybe hundreds of them. Now, when that's over, and we've struck that blow, we need to reassess our policy. Right now, we are supporting a government in Iraq that is controlled by, influenced by, and maybe even manipulated by Iran. It's a Shia government. Iran is Shia. Iran has always wanted to be able to dominate that part of the world. And we're supporting them. Our Marines are there in a base that is supporting the Iraqi security forces, most of which are Shia, all of which are under the domination of Shia uh, government officials and therefore under the domination of Iran. When this fight is over with, my suggestion is that we relook our policy. You see, we're in this situation because we precipitously pulled out of Iraq in 2011. We need to get all of our forces embedded with the, the Kurds. We need to give them as much equipment as they need. We need to fly airplanes into Erbil and offload as much equipment and ammunition as they can use and then put our forces with them and, and take on ISIS uh, every opportunity we have. The Kurds will fight. They're tough people and they're friends. They're allies. They always have been. And then you have the Christians and the Yazidis, both of which are being slaughtered by uh, ISIS. So why not put our uh, forces and our effort and our, our emphasis uh, with people that are willing to fight, that people that want to be free, people that understand the concept of not being under the domination of, of Iran. I say we, uh, we throw our lot in with the Kurds and uh, let's make them successful.